What is up everybody? Thank you for tuning in to another episode. Got another installment of the Cat's Table here. We are sitting down at the table. It is a cold, cold winter morning here in coastal Alabama. We are here at the tail end of November, uh, just the last day of November, and it's getting chilly. It's getting very, very chilly. Uh, I woke up this morning, it was about, about 37 degrees here in coastal Alabama, so. Didn't uh, decided I wanted to, you know, take the morning off from fishing. I'd sit down at the table, give you guys some, you know, give you another episode of this uh, the captain's table here, and thought about, you know, this time of year, what a better thing to, to talk about than sheephead. I know a few of y'all asked in the last captain's table, you know, you did want to see what is in my sheephead box, so I figured I'd kind of show it off to you. You know, sheephead bites good right now. It's going to keep getting better throughout the winter. Uh, for the next few months, it should just be be kicking off. We believe done really, really good on them so far. Uh, so yeah, it's been a good year, but you know, I just wanted to kind of walk y'all through what I use for sheephead, what I do for them, and uh, what I look for. It's really, really pretty simple stuff, um, you know, compared to the trout fishing, the redfish and everything. Sheephead fishing is definitely, definitely simple, um, but it is it is enjoyable in its, in its own, own rights. But we're gonna quit yabbering on, we're gonna go ahead and jump into it, you know, jump into the gear, everything, what I look for, you know, what I'm using for bait and everything, so y'all stick tuned. All right, so first things first, just gonna kind of show you what I keep in my box when I'm sheephead fishing. It is very, very simple. I don't bring a whole lot of stuff, just a few things in particular, and uh, gets the job done for me. First thing I bring, you know, I always like to stick with some 15 pound fluorocarbon. This is the Seaguar Red Label. Um, you know, it's been, been pretty good for me. That fluorocarbon seems to hold up a little bit better than mono or something like that. You know, the mono is good, it's got a lot of stretches. It has its rights, you know, for top water, for jerk baits and stuff. But fishing for these sheephead, you need something that's got a lot of abrasion resistance and uh, just holds up to a lot of barnacles and pylons and all sorts of stuff. Because anybody that sheephead fish knows when you are sheephead fishing, you are in just some some nasty, nasty areas. So I usually go 15. I try to keep it light. Uh, now I keep some 20 pound with me as well. You know, if I start getting busted off a lot on the 15 or you know, just just seem to to break off more hooks than than catch fish, I'll sw I'll bump it up to 20. But but 15 is usually my go-to. Uh, next thing I've got, just some good old good old split shots. Uh, these are the number, or size fives, I'm sorry. The size five split shots. Um, you know, nothing, nothing, like I said, nothing fancy. Uh, but I just throw a couple split shots on there um, and they, they do me well. Uh, they're kind of cheap as, as far as other lead weights and everything. They're the one of the cheaper affordable ones. So it's always nice to save a few bucks when you're sheephead fishing. Because one thing I will tell you is I can guarantee you, you will lose weights, you will lose hooks, you will lose leaders. You're going to lose a lot of gear. You're going to lose a lot of tackle sheephead fishing. But that's just all part of it. Next thing I keep on the, on the box or in the box with me. Some good old Gamakatsu octopus hooks. Uh, these are the size twos. I'll use any, you know anywhere from size two to size four, um, and I, I like to go small. I like to go a lot smaller hook than most people. But there's a few reasons for that. Um, you know, one thing I think sheephead look at the hooks or uh, look at the line, look at their bait or everything before they eat a little bit more than other people lead on to believe. Uh, especially if you're in clear water. You know, these fish got pretty good eyesight. And I think they're they're looking at that. They can pick out those bigger hooks. They can pick out the treble hooks, they can pick out the line and everything. So that kind of leads back to the, the you know lower poundage uh, leader line. So I just like to keep everything real small, real subtle. And uh, just, yeah, you know, I don't like them to see it. And on top of that too, you know, I think when they eat the crab, I think if you have a treble hook or any kind of a bigger hook or anything like that, I think they feel that and they can spit that out. And anybody that, that you know, and like I've said a few times now, anybody that sheephead fish, knows they don't have much of a bite um, if you feel anything it's very very subtle so any you know any second you can give yourself uh, is, is better when they are eating so you know if they bite that crab bite that shrimp whatever and they don't feel that hook I feel like they get it a little deeper in their mouth you know get it behind those couple of rows of teeth so you got to access to some gum or some some you know some softer part of the mouth that's not just teeth and you can get a hook in them. And especially, you know, if you don't feel the bite right off the bat, it gives you a couple extra seconds to kind of, you know, notice. Uh, so yeah, I like those smaller hooks, the octopus hooks. I've definitely had the best hookup rate on those compared to like a circle hook or anything like that. So Gamakatsu octopuses, those are my go-tos. I feel sorry for anybody in Baldwin County because as soon as stores stock up on them, I buy everyone I can get. So 
You gotta be quick on those if you want if you want to beat me to get the hook. Um, but yeah, kind of kind of the rig I used with all that gear is very very simple. Uh, just I mean it, this is like the most simple fishing rig you can get. Just good old you know the hook on the bottom tied off with a fisherman's knot, just kind of that seven inch or uh, seven twist blood cinch. Then I uh, laid it off with a couple split shots. I usually like to run those anywhere from six to eight inches above my hook. And uh, yeah, I mean, that is like my 99.99% of the time, that is the rig I'm using for these sheephead. Uh, you know, I do like to focus on a lot of shallower water, uh, stuff where I don't have to fight the current quite as much. So I'm able to get away with those smaller rigs and everything. But it's kind of a good transition to the only other kind of rig I'll really use. Um, if I'm fishing deeper water, uh, you know, anything 15 feet or deeper, a lot of current, Stuff where I just can't use that small rig, I will switch over to, which this is kind of tangled up, uh, but I will switch over to Carolina rig. And it's just a half ounce, uh, you know, egg, egg weight, bead, swivel, you know, anywhere from eight inches or so of leader line. And then you tie it off with that good old gamakatsu hook on the bottom. But like I said, I don't try to use that unless I absolutely have to. I always like to go small, I like to go that light rig, um, you know, using those, split shots over you know a, an egg weight and a swivel connection uh having just that straight line up to you you know to your rod you do feel the bite a little bit more if you get to feel anything uh, but yeah that, i mean that's basically my two rigs like i said it's nothing nothing too fancy just very very simple rigs uh, and on top of that you know i'll put live fiddler crabs that is like the number one tip i can give you for sheephead fishing is just get you some live fiddler crabs I don't even use anything else. I don't use shrimp, I don't use oysters, I don't use, you know, hermit crabs, any of that kind of stuff. I know they work and I know they have their opportunities, but I feel like 99.9999999999% of the time, the sheep are gonna eat a fiddler crab over anything else. And if they're not eating fiddler crabs, they're probably not gonna be eating anything else. So just get you some live fiddler crabs. They can be tough to get, but um, definitely, definitely suggest you getting you some some live fiddler crabs but on top of the bait and you know my rig stuff that i bring with me sheephead fishing one good thing to bring with you best piece of advice i can give you just some kind of scraper i use just a simple cobalt pry bar from you know home depot i think this was like seven bucks and just something that allows me to scrape a lot of the barnacles i'm sure y'all have seen in some of my previous videos scraping barnacles is a key golden ticket idea for when you're sheephead fishing. It's kind of like chumming them up. You know, a lot of these sheephead are just kind of chewing on barnacles, chewing on everything in the mix. So when you were scraping a lot of those barnacles, just really getting after it, kind of bunches all those fish up on one pile and it'll let you just kind of go go to work on them. Anybody that's been on a trip fish with me for sheephead has, has seen me. I, I don't try to scrape all of them. Keep in mind, you know, they're not gonna grow back this time of year. So what you scrape off is what you're, you know, What's on that pile now is what you will have until the end of sheephead season. So keep that in mind, you know, do a little bit of scraping. Don't, you know, don't, don't clear the whole side of the pile, but definitely want to do some scraping there. Well, I guess the last thing I would suggest that you definitely want with sheephead fishing, um, some kind of rope, uh, just simple rope. You know, I've got, got a clip on one side and a loop knot tied on the other. And that allows me, you know, a lot of the places we're fishing, we're tying up to pylons, tying up to, you know, different kind of structure and stuff. And just having something that you can run around the pile and clip yourself off to and not have to worry about, you know, holding on constantly or getting drifted off when you're catching your fish or anything like that. It just makes the day a little bit easier so you're not just constantly having to work yourself back to, to where you're fishing. So those are, um, I'd say of everything that that's, you know, of those things, that is definitely the most important things you can use, uh, need while you're sheephead fishing. Uh, of course, a net. A net's going to be very handy while you're sheephead fishing as well, uh, especially using these smaller hooks. It is notorious for when you try to boat flip them, you know, that hook will kind of bend out a little bit. So a net will definitely be your best friend when you're sheephead fishing. Uh, but yeah, outside of that, I mean, that's basically pretty much everything you need to know. Uh, that is the, the all, you know, the quick kind of quick, sweet, to the point, everything I use, everything I need for sheephead fishing. Uh, the only thing I can tell you right now is just just kind of get near the you know get near passes get near mouths and that kind of stuff The closer you are to the bay the better the fish are just stacking up eating on lots of lots of uh, you know everything So find yourself some pil pilings find yourself some you know some docks bridges anything like that closer to the mouths of these bays And you will more than likely find some sheephead using these rigs I showed you here but 
Yeah, so I think that's going to do it for me today. I uh, appreciate you guys tuning in. If you guys are interested in a guided kayak trip, sur uh, surf fishing trip, anything like that, if you're interested in getting out after some of these sheephead, want to try some of these out, not sure where to start, shoot me an email at kayaking.kennedy at gmail.com and we can line you up a trip. Like I said, sheephead bites have been very, very good for us. So, so if you're interested in a, in a sheephead kayak fishing trip, now is the time to do it. Uh, but yeah, if you guys enjoyed this video, I'd appreciate you if you shoot me the thumbs up. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. Uh, like I said, I'm, I'm trying to get these Captain's Table videos up a little bit more often. Uh, you know, that way you get to see the fishing action and learn a thing or two. So if you guys enjoy this kind of series, this Captain's Table series, let me know. And uh, drop a comment below. What do you guys want to see in the next one as we're kind of moving on, you know, through the year? What do you want to see? What, give me some ideas for this Captain's Table series and uh, we'll, we'll, I'll get after it. But like I said, that's going to do it for me today. I'm going to hop out of here. Appreciate you guys tuning in and I'll see you in the next one.